Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's April 2nd, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number uh, 689, even though it was intended to be, but that's all my fault. I just want to say just... I'm sorry. Anyways. Uh, Adentures. Where'd this V come from? Adentures. I'm sorry. (laughs) In normalcy. I thought it was a typo. (laughs) <laughs> oh that's cute um in any case so this last month at my bottom is done uh and it's been a long hard road getting into more solid foods uh in fact somebody brought donuts and I was like, hmm, donuts are soft. But they're also are they... very chewy. We're not talking about cake donuts. We're talking about the traditional fried yeasty dough. Like yeasty, yeah. Okay. But they're very chewy. And there was, and I didn't even eat the whole thing because it was just a lot of work to 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 even do some of it and my the adhesive on my bottoms came off really quickly and it started getting really bad Mm. so uh i was suffering through through the entire day alternatively uh right now i'm at the point where honestly having them in uh still like you know i'm still feeling them there's still all these things but like there was just one day i was driving home from work and listening to some music and i was belting out singing and i'm like oh i probably wouldn't have done this a few weeks ago so it it's feeling more normal eating is okay. still not quite there um but i haven't quite gotten to the point where i'm actually going to try the grilled cheese sandwich which Actually, that was magic words when I was last at the dentist when we were talking about, hey, what kind of foods can I start starting some suggestions? And she said two magic words, grilled cheese. And it got me super excited. <laughs> so that's some, going to be something I'm assuming this week. I'm going to make one grilled cheese sandwich. Okay. So if, it, if, if I have problems and I can't eat the whole thing, it's just one. I right, got my cheddar, got my Munster, got my uh, 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 pepper jack. Uh, all the ingredients. I watched the uh, uh, Mythical Kitchen uh, busting grilled cheese myth video to get an idea of some of the things to possibly make a great grilled cheese sandwich. The fact that they they determined that the best bread was sourdough, I'm like. Mm. Probably not the good idea of right now, but you know, in the mm. in the future when everything's more comfortable and I can start really chewing on it and just you know basically yeah. back to nor- full on normal, maybe yeah. I'll I'll get some myself some sourdough. So I got myself some plain white bread, 
<laughs> uh, by uh, uh, looking at other things, gonna gonna use butter stick and, and butter the the pan versus buttering the bread. Apparently, pan mm. butter is actually better than bread butter. Hmm. Uh, so okay. it's been an adventure in trying to learn how to do it and also how to glue my teeth properly. Yeah. What might cause cause things to start wearing off early and that sort of thing. So it's it's still a learning experience. Things are just moving along. In addition, my parents were going to be visiting me this month. Uh, originally, they said March 7th, but because of an injury from my brother. Okay. You might have mentioned it last month. No, I was going to say to you, Jeff, I was like, didn't that already happen? I thought like you mentioned that almost like two months ago, like they're coming. Like, like there was an announcement. This like, is why you know, I was that... doing all this. Right. right. And so I was like, wait, I thought they would have already been here and gone in this past month. Okay. So originally it was March 7th. But then my brother had to slip and break his hip or something like that. So they had to oh, take gosh. care of him for a few days or for a week. So they delayed their departure. They said they would be here about the 10th, which would have been the same day that I would have got my bottoms uh, done. Mm. Then they decided uh, we're going to actually, instead of going to you, then going to Florida for to see the twins at spring training, we're going to go directly to Florida and we'll see you on the way back. I'm like, okay. Okay. So I'll be the 25th. On hmm. the way down, they stopped in Georgia and they were at their hotel and my mother took a fall. Keep in mind, oh, no. my mother is hmm. 33 years older than I am. Okay. So, and her glasses broke. She got a black eye. Oh, she wow. She split her lip. Oh, she took a hell of a tumble. Yeah. Mm. So they had to take her to the hospital. I think, you know, split lip primarily, I think it was mostly for her. Uh, she was not looking good. She had to stay overnight. My dad was very upset and angry and not in a good mood. He sa said, uh, when we get mom out of the hospital, we're, we're going back home, been away from this nightmare trip. Mm. So they never actually made it to Florida. They got home and everything was fine and everything. Which also means, mm. but as part of that, he said, sorry, Jeff. And me, I was thinking, <laughs> but oh, so I mean, th this whole this thing, this whole thing is I needed to do anyway. So it, it originally it gave me the motivation to do it. So yeah, finally get it done. I need to do it anyways. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons. I'm not going to say excuses. Because none of them are excuses. Just this is why it happened. You know? Mm -hmm. And it was something that needed to be done. And now right. it's essentially done. I'm at a point where uh, the only reason to go back currently is uh, if I have some issues. And still judging things i had some problems at certain times but then it's like today it's not really any i really haven't had any problems or anything uh so and most of those would be just having some constant minor issues or something just made some adjustments made and then we call them set up appointment go in they do some adjustments to help out and then move on from there right so haven't really determined anything yet so uh as of right now, it's a slow. It's a slow process, and I'm patient. I'm just hoping by the time my birthday rolls around in August, uh, that I'll be able to eat a McGangbang. That's my goal. It's my goal. If I don't, I'm gonna be okay. But that's how I could tell I've reached peak normality with my teeth. Okay. <laughs> As clarification, we're talking about eating. Yes, that's yes. why I said a McGangbang. McGangbang is a, a hey, McDouble. Hey, a, for all I know, you I, could be I've like wanting for 
I know, I know. I just, but not everyone listens to every episode. So I I thought we should clarify on the remote chance that they might get confused and think that you have like a Ronald McDonald fetish or, you know, <laughs> maybe you want a guy to dress up as Grimace and be a bottom, you know. I don't know. Just... In any case. Uh, 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 a double cheeseburger, a McChicken sandwich. <laughs> open up the, bagel, the double cheeseburger. Put the put the McChicken sandwich in the middle. Squish it all down. McGangbang. It's delicious. <laughs> I'm watching David try to put the, the hashtags in because I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a doozy. Oh, is that there all you're writing? You're not gonna put yeah. like bottom mm-hmm. and grimace nope. there? I see how it is. <laughs> uh-uh. I see how it is. Kind of that's getting in there. <laughs> But thank you, Jeff, for explaining right. again the McGang Bang. Just in case a listener or you know, whoever did not know what that is. Did I spell that right? I don't even know. Yeah. Oh God, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, we're, we're we're all in here. Just saying. That's what happens when you have cloud documents. Mm-hmm. But, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just looked over the order of the hashtags and they are like, <laughs> oh my gosh. If anybody ever pays attention, so for those that don't know, um, every every time we do. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Edward, oh my god, sorry, I got distracted by the telegram. Um, <laughs> so, for those that don't know, every episode we have these things called hashtags. Um, they're basically keywords that we put in that we utilize in several different areas, especially on the websites. Like, if you ever are looking for any episode that potentially had that within its discussion, that's one way you can like search. And then, like, every episode that, like, has that in it would come up. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, David, your face. Um, and then, uh, but we also, you know, could use them in, in other ways. So, but if you ever read them without listening to an episode or following along, you'd be like, this is all over the place. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. <laughs> oh, but when Dr. Anyways. Edward says... Did you know that Grimace is a, a swollen taste bud? I don't know about that. Like that, it's bad enough he looks like a butt plug to begin with. I I think that you know a swollen taste okay. bud is is a stretch. Apparently, I know now. Okay. <laughs> In any case, okay. So okay, that has been my adventures in normalcy, Damon. Well, I'm glad that you're working on it and getting more used to it. I know friends, and we've we're, we've talked about doing this something in the future. If we're kind of having those conversations, it does take a little while. And given that you're only a month ish in, if that, yeah. So you know, good. For we're you. a month for the top, less than a month for the bottoms. Right, right, right. So. It'll, you know, give it time. Mm-hmm. So a um, couple of things. Um, I'm going to talk about the second thing first. Um, so if you were listening in pre-show, um, Gary was talking about how windy it's been. Mm-hmm. And it has been quite windy here on the what, Midwest. Nope, we're not Midwest. Whatever. Anyway, this area. Right. The, nor- um, the northern, northern mid, mm-hmm. mid-west mid Northeast, yeah. Yeah. So, um, when was that? I have to go back now and look at my calendar because it was, uh, yeah, um, back in early March. Um, I had gotten up and no, Jim had gotten up and was running some errands. I got up a little later, a lot later, and um, noticed an odd sound. Um, coming from our bath in our bathroom 
the winds were kicking out really hard and I was just like, oh, it's just the wind, whatever. You know, it's howling and hitting the house really hard and I'm not used to this weather. Yeah. Hold on. So, Is this the bathroom we've already had whole, all these stories no, about? No, 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 no. This is the, that's the, this is the second floor bathroom. That was the okay. first. Yeah. Okay. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Wait a second. <laughs> yeah, no, that would, no, no. Mm. Anyway, so um, I go hang out with a friend and I'm, uh, I've left, like, I've been out most of the day and then I get back and we're hanging out. Um, and then he, ha- he leaves and I'm still at home. And then Jim kind of messages me and he goes, hey, by the way, once you know, um, there's been, there's some singles on, no, he, he came in um, and he was like, you got your wish. And I'll explain that in a second. Um, there's some um, singles on the, on the driveway. Mm-hmm. So go outside and look up. And sure enough, in our, if you're looking at the house, the left side on the dormer, which is where the bathroom on the second floor is, like, there's like singles ripped off and flapping. Now, the good news is that um, our roofers in 2020 just put, a, like, basically put a whole roof on top of our previous roof. That's what has ripped up. So there's still, like, a roof there. Um, uh, the bad, Wait, the, so, uh, so this is the new roof? Yes, I'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> so... Back in 2020, similar problems happened where there was a windstorm um, in January, I think, of 2020. And uh, we had some shingles fall off the roof. Um, I contacted the insurance. They sent someone out. They looked and they're like, oh, the roof's kind of, you know, there's some issues. Obviously, some of the, where the areas where some of the shingles had fallen off. But there's also other issues because it was probably the original roof or maybe not the original, but an older roof. So... We got a new roof done. Um, I called a comp. I went on to um, Home Advisors, which is what it was at the time. It's now all Angie. Um, went on Home Advisors and had one person, actually three people call, but one that I hit up got hit me up first and talked to them. And they came over and they did a review and they looked at the estimate that we got from. The insurance company and they're like oh we can do this we can give you a whole roof yada 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 okay cool it sounded really good they had a deal on the singles because they had over um they had some leftover from a previous job it was close enough to the color that it would all work out um they got the roof done and then you know COVID happened um a year later um we had noticed there was some um, damage to the beadboard on our ceiling um, on the porch. Um, and we were getting get fixed, had someone come in and look at it. We thought it was animal damage. Well, guess what? It was a leak. It was a water leak. And thank heavens, um, the days that they were out doing the repair for that, um, it had started raining, like really bad. It was raining really heavy. And that's when they noticed the leak. So had to get that taken care of. Um, they stopped working on that. And we, I contacted, tried to contact the roofing company because I had a lifetime guarantee on the roof, blah, 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 blah. Well, they're no longer in business. Nope. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And um, they closed in 2020. I do know that much. But, you know, nothing was ever sent. Anything, you know. And um, so I had to contact another roofing company. They went up there to look at it, you know, look at the area and they were like, oh, by the way, this is this is crap. Whoever did this, they've done all these weird fucking things like over nailing and just cutting shingles to like the edges of things, which means there's potentials for stuff to get around it and leak in. It's bad. And there's all the you know other things. So fast forward to this month or March 
And that's where the roof has come up because it was probably very hastily put down there. I'm surprised um, this is the first time we saw an issue because mm. we've had some really bad weather, you know, most of this kind of this year. So, because um, the that happened in 2021 when they came and did, they the roofing company that I ended up getting did the front half because we needed to get it finished so that we can get the ceiling of the porch done. So that had to be fixed. Mm-hmm. Um, and they told me, like, in a few years, you're probably going to have to get the whole thing redone anyway. So I was like, well, hell. Um, so good, the quote unquote good news is that now I have an insurance claim because of the damage to this from this windstorm that has ripped up the other roof. So maybe I'll get a little bit more done. We'll see. Um, they're coming on Wednesday to check it out and we'll go from there. Um, am I happy okay. about it? No, but I also know, um, I have it. I know it needed to be done. Um, so it'll just be something that gets done. So that part. So that's the mm-hmm. the fucked up thing. So um, with that, now we talk about the next thing, which is oh, um, wedding! Yay! Um, so. Last month in March, um, Jim and I and a couple our our basically our wedding party, um, our friends um, went to do our tasting or our wedding cake and design and all that stuff. So and that was a lot of fun. Um, a little not frustrating, but just a lot of choices that you don't think about when you're just like, we're just going to get married and we're going to go get a wedding cake and all that stuff. Cause design is a really interesting element Mm -hmm. that you don't think of until you actually have to sit down and do it. The good thing for this person is they were, we're getting this cake essentially as part of our package with the place that we're um, having the wedding at Mm -hmm. Um, with her, um, her, Flavors are limited. Like she's only got so many flavors of cake, like three, I think three flavors of cake, and then a maybe a dozen like flavors inside. And then she only uses buttercream outside of it. So there's not as many options as when you're doing things like fondant and 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 have color choices and food, you know, different flavors of cake and different flavors of, um, um, you know, flavoring like icings or fillings. That's the word I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and and that really helped because um, it allowed us to limit what we were doing, but we did come up with a really great idea, a really great concept. I think it's going to go super well i'm looking forward to seeing the finished product um the good the other side of it though is um speaking of cake um i have been on a weight loss journey um back in january i had actually last year um, i had a conversation with my doctor um i've been you know big for a while and i've been getting bigger and she had noticed in particular um over the like a after that at that appointment for like the year I had gained like 50 pounds. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was a lot. So um we talked about things that could be causing that issue. And um realistically a lot of it is I'm not nearly as quote unquote active as I was before because I'm now working from home. Um I'm now I don't have far to go. I don't walk downtown. I don't take the bus and walk to the bus anymore. It's all like I'm home. So um, that's been one of the other factors. And there have been a few other things, but mostly that's one of them. Um, So I decided to start a weight management program. Um, I started it in January. And um, the first 
conversation was was with a just weight management doctor who and a dietitian um, who basically was like, here are your options, um, non-surgical. They ha- they work on non-surgical options, which are like exercise programs and and in my case, um, um, medication. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think I've mentioned this maybe on the show. Or, I'm probably in post show. So patients, you know this. Um, I started Rego V, um, which is an injectable um, weight loss drug, a couple of weeks ago, and um, doing really good with it. Yay! So we'll see how that goes. Um, but I've also went there. Also went the route of the surgical options, which are gastric bypass, gastric sleeve. Um, I'm probably if I did it at all, it'd be gastric bypass. But I'm not 100 percent sure I'm doing that. I want to see how this uh, medication goes, but ha- in conversations with the weight management program, I can do both, if that makes sense. I can start on the medications and also continue with the program for the surgery, which there's a lot of steps involved with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and once, you know, I make the decision, I could either continue with the weight loss and weight management program or do the surgery. Um, I right now am not wanting to do surgery, but I'm going to keep going through the programs. You just kind of have to stay with the appointments um, in order to kind of, if you change your mind like a month or two or six months down the line, you can continue with the program as long as you've got done all the other steps. Right. Um, so there's that. Um, it's been interesting. Um, I think if I did my weigh in last week correctly, I've lost over 30 pounds. So nice. Yay. Um, and we're going to see where it goes from there. The, the, we go V, which is the, um, drug I'm on um, is meant to suppress appetite. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's been a journey in learning when I'm actually full as opposed to be eating a whole plate of stuff and feeling full stuffed. Mm. So, yeah. And we go V, just so everyone knows, we'll t- you will know when you are when you have eaten too much, you will know. Interesting. Yeah. I um, yeah. My PCP talked to me about this quite a while ago, and it's been a long thing, only because I've been kind of delaying. And I really, you and I, Damon, I think, did talk a little bit about this one on one. And I said that you know I was planning to do something as well, and I just need to get the um appointment with the specialist because while my PCP wants to like get me on the medication pretty much the same uh thing as you like you basically need to see a specialist um or a specialist team and discuss all the options and then figure yeah. out like what best works and that kind of stuff and I've actually been doing a lot of research on the injectables um because they've been in the news recently yeah and the stuff that's going on with them um and it's interesting. Um, I've had family members and friends who have had surgeries. Um, a, a lot of advancements have come a long way uh, yeah. in the past, like, 20, 30 years. So I think that people can feel more comfortable or more safe with things. The mm-hmm. The thing that it all comes down to, I see consistently, is if you as the individual, whatever journey that you take, do not modify your behaviors, then whatever you've done will have certain results, but there's the potential that that will be, that will not be for the rest of your life because um, there are other factors. And the reality is, you know, we, we created the bodies that we have by doing a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And if you keep doing that or go back to it, well, yeah, that's going to be a thing. So, and that's something that I've been, thinking about so i appreciate you talking about it because a part of me was like when you had mentioned and i was like oh okay i can kind of see how damon does (laughs) (laughs) nice you can kind of keep an eye on me and there you go because it's going to be 
Like I know I, I started it two weeks ago and I have two more doses for the next two weeks. And, but I don't see the weight management doctor until May. So I'm kind of like, they're going to call something else in. Um, I'm going to reach out to him. Don't worry, Gary, by the way. I was <laughs> I just going to say, I see like, your face. Like, no, because I was like, like, this week you better be calling them and be like, hey, is this like an auto renew every 30 days until you see me yeah. again? And 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 sometimes I think that's just true for anybody. This is kind of a PSA moment. Um, like when you have a – this is the shitty thing about American medical. Like mm -hmm. you have to be your own advocate. You have to be on top of things. You have to hold the system accountable. So you have to like right. – tell the staff when stuff isn't working and things don't get communicated and you know and i really it bothers me a lot because i've it's very oppressive on our aging population right because you don't have the ability always to keep track of things or understand and there's changes in technology and if you start having cognitive decline which happens technically for nearly all of us as we age mm -hmm. whether it be sooner or later you know, that yeah. that does become a challenge about keeping track of your medications and your appointments and when you should do certain things. And the really crappy thing is, like, the system is failing because it doesn't follow back up. And it doesn't say, mm -hmm. like, like, let's say, like, your medication ran out and you waited until you got to the appointment and then you show up and then, you know, they ask you about taking the medication. And you're like, well, I haven't taken it in a month. They'd be like, well, why not? And it's like, well, because you only gave me 30 days. Like, and do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like, I will say, for example, um, um, I, I, I'm on a few medications and I had um, I had not gone to the doctor. Um, this is a while back. I hadn't gone to the doctor for like two or three months, I don't think, something like that. And I was thinking everything's fine. And. I refilled the prescriptions, like requested the prescriptions to be refilled because they were out of them. And they like, oh, we'll just contact. We'll get in touch with your doctor. Well, the doctor's office declined it. And the reason they declined it was because I hadn't been in. And I was like, but you hadn't indicated to me that you needed me to come back in mm -hmm. to have an appointment to get these done. So, again, so like I, that's exactly kind of the point. And they're not on like they're not one of the bigger like medical conglomerate kind of things, especially around here. So I can't just like I can I have to call in or I have to, you know, get on um um I can get online to request an appointment, but I can't schedule the actual appointment. Mm. That makes sense. Their website is is a little older. So I can indicate I need to come on this day or I can come on this day, but the time is not always known. So I just call in because it's just better for me to do that as opposed to trying to do it at the address site. But I'm on, I'm with another company. A lot of the weight management stuff is through um, a bigger, like they have their own sites and all this stuff to where I can, like I was talking about it. I'm probably going to send a notice to the doctor's office and be like, hey, um, this is going for a couple more weeks and I need, what's going to happen after that? Cause I don't see that there's a refill listed. Mm -hmm. Are you just going to automatically do it? Do I need to schedule something earlier? Do I need to talk to someone? What do I need to do? So, right. but with that, um, uh, wedding plans are going forward. Um, invitations have been sent out. Um, we're slowly getting, uh, responses in. Yay. Um, and we did the, uh, we set up a hotel block. So that's all good. So, yay, all that. Nice. How about you, Mr. Gary? Um, I said, where did this, where did the time go? Where did, where did, where did March go? It just feels like it flew really fast. Um, work's been interesting. Uh, my, work spouse quote unquote uh who started last fall is out on medical um they've been luckily uh, pretty quickly been able to work just a limited amount of hours part time they're possibly mm -hmm. coming back in another week on site which is exciting uh just because um there's a lot of potential for change at work and improvement 
and mm. we want to be like those seeds of change that like you know we want to be change makers we want to make some big improvements and we were just have recently having a phone call this past week about the potential of like seeing the bigger picture and that not everyone necessarily does that in a workplace like they're they're looking at the minute the hour the day the project or whatever and they're not necessarily like thinking one year three year five years and how like my goal is that we really step up public health in the area that we're in within the community, but it's not going to happen overnight. And we have to like work at that. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that I have a coworker that's willing to kind of see the same vision and do that. So that part's enjoyable. Um, one of our other coworkers is about to leave, I think, uh, in a month, which sucks. Uh, they took a position with the state, uh, pretty much doing the same thing. So I'm happy for them that mm -hmm. like, you know, they're, uh, theoretically making a step up. I mean, they are getting better pay, yada, yada. So, um, but then it leaves a gap and we don't know what's going to happen with that until we get another person in how long it will take. So yeah, like a bunch of stuff. Um, and as weird as it is to say, um, pride season is coming, even though we are just in the beginning of April, we are now planning on what we're doing in the month of June. And so I'm on the advisory board for the local pride Alliance and, um, I didn't realize this until I looked at the numbers. Our pride event has doubled every year for the past four in-person years. Wow. Right. So that's a lot. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. And, and so it's grown exponentially. It's to the point where we don't know how many people are coming this year, but we're going to guess that we're going to get the same numbers as last year, possibly. But we're at the stage now where we really need to do some different kind of planning. Um, so I brought it up uh, yesterday during our board meeting about the concept of like, we need to start thinking in terms of like emergency management and mm. like public safety. And cause like when you have a smaller event of kind of affair, you don't really quite have to do those things because you're not managing quote unquote, or sort of expected to be responsible for a volume of people. And right. so I guess I put it this way, like when there's a hundred people, a hundred people of density is a certain thing. And if it's an outdoor event, it's easier than kind of an indoor event, you know, due to exits and things like that. So, but when you start, when you add a comma and now you're in the thousands, right? that's, that's a different thing. So, um, so yeah, already like thinking about what's happening in the month of June and things along those lines. And I had to laugh because then I was asked if I had any input on the picnic, which doesn't happen until August. And <laughs> I immediately said, hell no. Like, we have to get through pride. Like, please. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like one thing at a time, people. <laughs> like, right. um, so, yeah, it's been uh, it's been interesting. But it just feels like, you know, time flew past. And I'm, I'm, I'm bothered that it's already April. And the reason yeah. why I'm bothered is... Three whole months, January, February, March, gone. Yep. And yeah. I don't feel like I have that best of recollection about what happened in those months. <laughs> like, what did I do? I don't know. Right, right. So, yeah. So, there's uh, that. That's it? Wow. Where did the time go? Okay, Dad. Okay, fine. We'll just <laughs> go into this. <laughs> Gary, what's been going on in the Twitterverse? We got a couple new follows, a handful of people. Uh, we would like to thank the following individuals for liking what we have on Twitter and uh, following us. So, at panda bear x67 cubby underscore sean 1999 k koidzi is a guess on my part and at good boy x10 so thanks for following us on twitter and over on the facebooks we have uh jeff jack roy lewis holly boyd alvin mayshack uh stephen flanagan a battle reg Rajput, interesting name. Uh, Tony Antheon, 
Evan Dame, Chris Edwards, and Aiden P. Mohanahan. Mohanahan? Yeah, I'm not sure. Mohanahan. Mohanahan. There you go. Mohanahan. Anyway. Apologize for mispronouncing any names. Gary. Ding, what's what's the updates on the patrons? Well, the first part is it's so funny because sorry, it's a sidebar. I was just like <laughs> having this flashback. In the past month, I did have to travel for work, and one of the people uh in the statewide planning coalition I'm with, it was their birthday, and we went out to a Mexican restaurant, and sure enough, they had them, they brought a sombrero, and like there was a whole like singing thing and a dessert. And I was just thinking <laughs> As I'm about to say this line, I'm like, oh, I don't have any way to, like, you know, kind of do this. Uh, but happy five-year anniversary to Uber patron Q, who Yay. celebrated five years back on March 14th. They've been uh, a patron with us for five years, nearly since the very beginning. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. I'll, I'll stop there. There we go. Happy, happy. <laughs> happy anniversary yeah. from... From COL to you, we wish it was our anniversary so we could party too. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we do want to give it some uh, Big Bear uh, Cub hugs to our patrons at the Cubster level. Charles W., Daniel C., and Michael K. Our U Bears, Dave T., Lee, Michael Q., and Tim S., uh, plus our buddies Lloyd G. and Michael V. So. Um, yeah, uh, we've reached, we have completed, we have circled and uh, gone around the sun five whole years of Patreon. Um, and we very much thank them because lo and behold, as Jeff just <laughs> notified us, our auto renewal for the, um, website account stuff is coming up in May. So I love that, uh, our hosting domain company let us know basically almost two months ahead of time, like, Hey, Y'all got a bill coming. Wow. Yeah, I think the uh, price has gone up, too. It oh, has. Nice. And and I kind of did plan for that. I noticed that over the past couple of times we've renewed that it, it incrementally increases. It's not huge. Um, it's actually a little under what I predicted. So, Oh, that's good. Mm, yay on that part. But the money uh, from Patreon basically gives us the ability to renew every two years for that portion and make some other um, upgrade stuff, which reminds me, Jeff, I need to talk to you uh post recording about something uh i'll explain later yep dun 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 mystery um so <laughs> but more importantly uh we will be reaching out to the patrons because now that we've reached the end of our fifth year uh, we have some rewards that are going to be coming out and some exciting news uh i'll just give a little teaser now that we have some new designs coming to our zazzle merch Ooh. And please purchase them so they stay on the store and don't get hidden. <laughs> so yeah, I'm uh, I'm actually kind of excited about some of the new stuff that we're adding. Um, Cute. And what that will that will be like. My gut tells me one of the newest designs is going to be fun. <laughs> some folks. True. Gary, uh, can can we talk about this last month of shows? <laughs> sure. Uh, so episode six eighty six was what's going on for the month of February. Six eighty seven. Um, let's talk about aging, <laughs> which seems to be a recurring theme <laughs> now <laughs> as we get into the, almost the seven hundreds of this show. Dentures, weight loss, <laughs> sweet teeth. <laughs> <laughs> um more more on that later um <laughs> and then last week or no sorry two weeks ago stand corrected was 688 and that was landscape of relationships our ongoing series with dr edward angelini cook and we talked about sexual desire mm -hmm. um and then... and <laughs> about last week <laughs> <laughs> so um what was originally COL 689 um, was a let's talk about, and uh, <laughs> so funny. Um, so the title was LGBTQIA modeling. And my co-hosts 
uh, took it in a different direction than I had intended. So we, the three of us got together. I think we had a, a lovely conversation. We discussed our thoughts about what I was trying to say, what that meant. Mm-hmm. And we finished the show. And then the next day. <laughs> Jeff. I found out that uh, apparently when my settings in OBS had changed or something, we didn't record the system audio. So Gary, Damon, sound effects, all that was not recorded. So it was a very boring episode if you actually got to watch it. Um, because I'm assuming because we didn't have anybody live to mention anything about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even realize it. Because last several shows, I didn't have to do anything, and everything was fine. And then this time, just as, of course. Right. So Damon and I are actually familiar with this phenomenon, because on Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, we have learned to pay attention, especially since we're not recording weekly. Uh, Damon even knows, because he can see my he I screen share, so he can see the software, and he's caught a couple of times now that the meters are not indicating that the audio is recording. And it's been, we've been pretty good recently, but there was once or twice where we like did a whole pre-show <laughs> or got a couple minutes into recording. And then he's like, uh, nothing's moving. Like, is, is this working? Like, is like, is this thing on? And then we find out it's not, and then we have to go back. And, and while I love OBS and I think it functionally works great for a lot of people, I just don't know what it is as to why it gets a little wonky and it's usually with an update. You've got to double check your settings mm-hmm. and make sure that it hasn't decided to change shit on you. And I kind of think, I don't know if you had an update, but I think that's exactly what happened. Like, well, I haven't just... updated anything recently because there's a feature that's currently not supporting the most recent update. So I've been okay. not updating for right now. I haven't checked to see if I can yet, but. Because I would love to, but... Yeah, mm. so that being said, I, I wasn't surprised. I mean, I was surprised when you privately messaged us and were just basically, like, cursing the world. Fuck! Um, when you found out that, like, last week sort of didn't happen. Um, it, it, so, it, yeah. It's a stupid little thing. It's just one thing I should look at is make sure, sure, while I'm setting everything up, just make sure all my meters are working. And if everything's working, then everything's fine, you know? And it's, right. it's a super easy fix. Just well, and, and, a, and a little behind the curtain thing. So, like, when Damon and I do um, the Cubs Out Loud drag race, like this season, we're doing it every couple weeks. I just record local to computer instead of streaming purely because of like my computer it needs upgrades and some stuff and it has bandwidth issues but um that all that being said i'm just like so mine's even a little bit different than yours because like right now you're streaming directly out through youtube so we're live hi (laughs) yeah and sometimes i remember to also hit the start Um, recording button which comes in very handy but uh, yeah, forgot to do that this time, but that's okay because yeah. I got a backup. Basically, I like doing both as a backup, and plus, also sometimes it's faster for me to edit if I just mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like have a recorded one and I don't have to download from right. YouTube. So, yeah, so yeah, uh, so technically, this is our second version of 689. <laughs> As we as we decided before we went live that we were going to just like delay the number, right. um, so we might return to that topic. I don't know. Uh, I've already got the whole next month booked out, so <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. If anything, just... you've got the art done. You just need to change the number. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you know. So last week was an oops, and that was on us, and we apologize because sometimes shit happens, you know? Yeah. I take full responsibility. In any case, let's go into this. I totally forgot to check Twitter. Damon? (laughs) I love that. Like, and nothing. Well, then I'll make up for you because I have two. Um... So my first one is I titled How Rude, um, and it's from um, 
at Mad Gray Wolf. And it's just it's some fun um, flexing, but the song is um, Rude Boy. It's Rihanna's Rude Boy. So that's why it's called How Rude. Because how dare you, how rude of you to like have this in my presence and I can't just like touch it. Uh, I am not able to view this tweet because this account owner limits who views their tweets. Oh, no. Well, that's a shame. But I can see the replies. Uh, I can oh, all positive. Him. Oh, I'm Beautiful, I... super sexy, very handsome, my ideal man. Uh, oh, it's uh, because I'm following actually... him. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. I think with yeah. uh, two people following him, uh, Gary, you should probably follow him. Well, let me see if I can look at their profile at all. <laughs> you okay. Look at their profile. The follows. Just can't see the tweet. Well, even yeah, even when I go to look at the profile, it says these tweets are protected, um, and all I get is yeah. like the the very limited info to look at. Yeah, yeah, but you can follow. Them. I know, I know, but it's going to take a minute. Anyway, with that That's being right. said, um, it's a nice little video. It's a fun, sexy man popping his pecs, and I love it. With that, um, my next one is from at Greg Berger six. And it's called Fetish Hosen. And That's fair. Yeah. It's kind of a fun, like we've I've I've been so there was a trend for a while, especially like on like memes of like um gene something like you you lot you like you haven't touched your like and you would like put in jeans or blue jeans for words, like adding it to like a something else. And then this guy has made fetish hosen. They're they're blue jean, but they have a unique um, bandana like pattern in certain areas, which is where I'm guessing the fetish per- part is coming from. Well, I'm trying the, to. The hosen comes from later hosen. Yes. Right. That's why, like, I have my head cocked and I'm just staring at this and I'm like, this is so interesting because yeah. so they basically took Lederhosen, but they made it out of denim and mm-hmm. bandanas. Mm-hmm. So it's like fashion. And yet it is speaking to bandana culture fetishism mm-hmm. As well as like denim leather Levi, you know, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then they've got a wristband mm-hmm. that they've done with this, I think the same. Or, yeah. well, uh, no, maybe not. At it's least really one of them. damn close. One though. of them is. The yeah, one on the like, left wrist is the same pattern, probably same color. Yeah. Like it, it's just really intriguing plus he's hot so you know that that always helps you know Mm -hmm. furry big red bear um and i'm reading through the comments and people (laughs) well it's one person they're like you know i'm obsessed where can i get it and they're like uh anybody can make it and they're like uh perhaps you'd sell a pair and they said i sell stuff to people all the time slide into my dms Mm. so if you're interested you should um look up at greg burger number six uh because yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a fun look. I like it. Um, and seeing that he actually, you know, made this himself, that kind of adds a more like, oh, that's kind of really unique and crafty. And um, I really do like this. And I, I want to like blow this up to kind of look at this. It's gonna sound bad. I want to look at the crotch area because <laughs> see if it's one I of the removable s- ones or right. Like, is it removable? Is it, is it like, it doesn't look like it has a zipper. I know it, I is, it is snaps. like, it is like a classic leader hose and it has two snaps at the very top. Yeah. So, so here, let me put this in the chat for the two of you. So you can get the high res <laughs> zoomy <Yeah>. in. <laughs> uh, there we go. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. So I don't quite. No, I just don't because think it... the tops are are snaps. I don't know if it comes down very far. It doesn't. I can see that from here. Um, 
now that I have a good way to close up. It looks like the snaps are connected to both sides of, but there's a middle, so there might be a zipper underneath. I mean, he has to have some sort of fly. Yeah. Right, right. Because so the top two snaps are on the waistband portion. Mm -hmm. And it's hard a little bit to tell with the belly in in this perspective, but I agree with you. Like those two snaps come down probably an inch or two. um, And there's probably a fly underneath. So yeah, it's not quite probably fully accessible as some of us very pervy people might want it to be, but you know, (laughs) but I do like it. I think I, I I appreciate the work. It looks, especially now that I can kind of zoom in a little bit. I'm like, yeah, it's good. Fun, fun. Yes, absolutely. Yeri. <laughs> Yeri. Sorry, I'm looking at the live feed and Damon's camera's gone. Now my camera's <sighs> gone. Damon's camera's back. <laughs> Hold on. I don't know what's going on. There we are. Sorry, I mean, the, the chat fully popped out on my Skype and... That might have caused disagreements. Oh, I was like, I'm like, why are we suddenly not visible? Anymore? I don't Anyways. know. It was weird. Uh, okay. Ah. So, um, fixed mine, eh, mine's fixed. Now Damon's is it? Now both of us are not fixed. I don't know. And plus, there's a Give delay. Give it a second. Back. You're on delay. I know. Okay. <laughs> so the first one, I have two as well. Uh, my first one is called "Big Boys Are Cute." Yes, they are. Yes. Yes. He um, is. Yeah. Because, so this is a lovely um, uh, black African-American male with a big, huge, black, bushy beard who is wearing a beautiful, like, rust uh, orange colored hoodie that has small white letters on the chest that says, big boys are cute. Um, And he looks great in it. And then if you go through and scroll a little bit in the Twitter comments, and there's a website bigboysarecute.com and they have uh, t-shirts, accessories uh, swimsuits apparently, I haven't really looked through all of this until just now, nothing on the swimsuits yet maybe soon Um, but yeah, hoodies t-shirts fat girl necklaces and they're Hmm. in Canada apparently is where they're based so, uh, but I wanted to appropriately like give him a shout out and be like, hell nice. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tons of supportive like comments like in the thread. So yeah. Mm. There's that. And and then this is the super pervy of all of us. Um oh. yes. So the other tweet I have is called Happy Thirsty Thursday. And this is from at John DeBear82. And this is a couple. Um, it says happy thirsty Thursday, fucking in Seattle showers, full video and only fans. And I don't really promote folks a whole lot to have only fans. I'm not against it, but I tried not to do that. Um, but this is a one minute and 23 second explicit video that is mm-hmm. nice to watch. Um, I think I've seen you. <laughs> I'm following you. No, I'm not, but I feel like I've seen your videos. So, oh, they are. Um, yep, they're okay. Yep, yep. <laughs> Full on fucking. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as a water sign, as a person who loves being <laughs> around water, in water, um, this is this like is one of my things. Uh so I was like, yes, this is this is great. Um, so I wanted to kind of promote that. Plus, I love the dynamic of um divergent like height couples where like one is taller and bigger than the other Uh, as a smaller height person that is like my draw. So like, Hey, if you're like around six foot or or so, um, I'm probably (laughs) much more interested. I don't have anything against anybody by height, but I like, I like the small spoon, like smaller (laughs) person dynamic. You're you're, it's one of those things, which it is a, plus not a minus and just because you don't have the plus it's you, you know you're still good <laughs> sorry if that makes any sense it, i don't know i wasn't saying that right it was bonus it was bonus features the dollars <laughs> yes 
Oh, sorry. I just got to the point where you're sucking them now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pause the video because I was having, um, it wasn't, it, I wasn't getting sound. And then I was like, what's going on? And then I got the sound. I was like, well, I didn't really hope that didn't go through. Yeah. Uh-oh, what's this? Uh, oh. For Jeff and David, I just gave you a follow up on uh, Damon's earlier, and I'm not sure if this is the exact same build, but uh, it looks like it's uh, something similar to that. Anyways, it's the backside of that outfit, or at mm-hmm. least possibly. Anyways, that'd be a different look, uh, but um, I, I, mm. nice for accessibility. Yeah. Okay, so I'm officially following him too. Got it. All right. Wait, oh, the first one? I Anyways. get what, ooh. Hey, good on you. Sorry. All right. Should we move Please. on to the links? Yes. All right. So, you guys enjoy Star Trek The Next Generation? Absolutely. All the stars. I, yeah. I think I am on record that Voyager is my season. Um, I, I mean, really same. didn't tune into TNG, I, but yeah, I, you know, John I am well Bates. aware. It's Miss Fadden. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, we had LeVar Burton. Mm-hmm. We had, had um, Marina Sirtis. We mm-hmm. had Brent Spiner. And we, of course, had Patrick Stewart as Jean Luc Picard. Huh. Picard. That sounds familiar with something that's been going on over the past couple of years. Star Trek Picard. Watch season mm-hmm. three this past month or so. Oof actually mm-hmm. uh and it's basically this season is kind of the oh michael dorn of course i was just gonna say don't yeah. cannot forget about wharf um and uh we do have seven of nine is in there for here. this past episode had a guest experience with tim russ who plays tuvok mm-hmm. more more voyager reference there Mm-hmm. Uh, this season is kind of the next gen reunion episode, but it keeps making reference to all three of those shows that were practically going on at the same time. So we got Voyager references. We have uh, uh, next gen re- references, obviously, since most of the cast is from Next Generation. Uh, Mika Burton. Do you know why her last name is Burton? Because she is the mm-hmm. daughter of LeVar Burton, and she plays yes. the, one of the daughters of Jordy LaForge, played by LeVar Burton in Yay. Star Trek Card. Uh, I've known Mika from other things, uh, including Cardinal mm-hmm. Roll, and mm-hmm. I never realized that she was the daughter of LeVar Burton. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. One point in time. So, uh, it's just really cool to, to have that. So it's it's been a really neat season, and it's really a one big story arc thing. It's a ten hour movie, ten ten episodes, one hour each. It's been great. I I've loved it. Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything about it. Just telling you that hey, you know, just like if you watched all the teasers, where basically all the members of the next gen cast kind of make a, a posing appearance uh, to show that they're in the show. And I mean, Jonathan Frakes. Daddy. It's hot stuff. Anyway, so I strongly recommend it. Is on Paramount Plus, which you can, if you don't want to create a Paramount Plus uh, account, you can subscribe to Paramount Plus on YouTube through their primetime channel, channel service, uh, which just happens to be part of my job. So I need to <laughs> make sure everything's hunky dory before it goes live, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Gary, what do you what do you got to recommend? 
Um, I will agree with you. Um, Picard season three is really good. Um, I'm enjoying what they're doing with it. It is essentially the continuation of the TNG series that folks, I think fans have been uh, wanting. I don't know if the content is quite that, but the fact that they're all back together as a cast is huge. Um, And it is, it it, it has been really good. Um, I think we're already on the latter half of the season. Mm -hmm. Uh, Right there. So yeah, it's um it's very interesting to see what they're doing and there's all this discussion in like social media about whether or not there's going to be spin-off series now. Um because there's some speculation that some of the cast the characters won't make it. Oh. Um, I I I if anything the next gen cast will right. I I I'm what would be kind of cool uh is if uh Mika, her sister, mm-hmm. Joe's sister, not actual sister, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or or just like a spinoff of the Titan. Yeah, where, where um, it's but yeah, the next there's some, Star Trek Titan. I think something. I think there's some speculation that people would like to see Worf and Raphael um, have a whole series um, mm-hmm. based on like their good back, good cop, bad cop kind of vibe. Um, and some other stuff. So anyways, yeah, I do recommend that people really check it out, especially really honestly, if you were a fan of, of TNG decide for yourself, get your own opinion on, on what you think of the, the season three. I'm personally liking it. Um, but I, I was totally in from the beginning when Picard, uh, came on as a series. I, I'm one of those, um, dual individuals. Like I've, I have been a star Wars fan since the original movie in the seventies when I was a small child. And I have liked Star Trek really in essence since Voyager started. Like I was aware of TNG. I was aware of TOS, but I just didn't really kind of get into it. But when Voyager came along with a female captain, I was like, this is progress. Like this is a thing. And and I watched it on UPN. Like my mom was a big QVC fan. I think I still have it somewhere in the basement. I have like the, the series release initial like – promo script or something like there was a thing that you bought and you got anyways so i was all in on voyager when it came out mm-hmm. and have been interested um and in in essence in some ways so yeah it's a i would really recommend that people check it out and for your jane for anybody who's interested in in seeing more janeway their star trek prodigy mm-hmm. which is really good yeah um i would say both of the franchises their ips like they're having quite the heyday in that they're really expanding with multiple series, different things going on, fleshing out more of their universes, um, respectively. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think the streaming platforms with Disney plus and Paramount plus when it comes to star Wars and star Trek. And uh, I'm, I'm like you, I'm, I grew up, uh, with my brother who was practically obsessed with star Wars. So I just kind of jumped on board with that. And then when TNG came out, I just fell in love with star Wars or star Trek and uh, just have, have been loving that so uh, i like both both yeah. both both is mm. both is good. yeah it's been um it's been enjoyable i i really have liked it so uh there's that but uh i <laughs> i have three things to share share two of them are related to each other and one actually goes back to yours jeff and i'll wrap with that yeah. um so this is a this is a personal aesthetic issue i have a undiagnosed condition um it's not misophonia but i really cannot stand when people have loud keyboards and mice like Mm -hmm. clackety 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 like Mm -hmm. and some people type hard with their fingers like with with gusto like with force and i'm like it's just a keyboard. Like, don't beat the shit out of it. Like, just just press the key. Press press the key. Be gentle with it. But anyways. You don't so, have to hit it that hard for it to, to, to take. So for me, personally, I also don't care for devices that make noise. Because um, sometimes they're just manufactured. And, like, the the way that they're made, like, pressing things has a clicking sound or that kind of stuff. So I have two 
Logitech made, I call them silent peripherals. Um, I have a wireless keyboard that I've had for several years that I'm very happy with, and I just had to replace my mouse. I think we talked about this in pre-show uh, <laughs> a week or two weeks ago, how I didn't realize how old my mouse was because I had rubbed away where my thumb is through the padding on the side. Um, and I got another mouse. Uh, I was being kind of cheap, so I bought one that was just a couple dollars, and it had arrived, and then I was so irritated because it was loud. Like, Every oh. scroll move and press of a button was click, click, click. click. And I was like, the fuck? Um, so then I went looking online and found this um, mouse. Um, it's actually meant to be silent. And I am so happy that <laughs> my stuff doesn't make much noise. And part of this is also because of my, my second job. Like, I talk to people, like, virtually with a microphone and I have to do things so I can, I know that sometimes the clicking comes through the mic and to me, that's distracting. Like that's not the mm. point of, of what we're doing. So, um, right. so these are just recommendations uh, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And obviously you don't have to go with Logitech. Like there's other manufacturers you can find all sorts of stuff, but um, Apple a few years ago, like re invented or changed their whole like hinge process for pat for keypads and how like, you know, they respond and and that kind of stuff. So I think there's been some advances in that area. And I'm like, it's just nicer when, you know, things aren't distractingly like with noise. So <laughs> so those are recommendations. Uh, the last one ties back to Jeff's link. Um, so Star Trek, the next generation as an 80s sitcom. I came across this recently uh, on YouTube and it just really tickled me as a concept because Basically, uh, it is like this homage to what if. Um, so what they did was they took TNG and turned it into Starfleet Academy, basically. And this artist rendered with AI what the characters would look like in this um, Saved by the Bell kind oh, of like God. aspect so um picard is the principal Riker is the vice principal and so they're not animated but they're these great ai generated re uh imaginings of the characters <laughs> and I just think it's... oh my god hold up did the forge not have a finger <laughs> hold on no that's wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. I just <laughs> caught that. Well, no, no, no. He's work. Sh he's wood shop. That's I why. I get it. I understand. But <laughs> hmm. <Rude. laughs> so it's just really funny to me how like they 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 spoofed this concept. Are you looking at Worf? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 just not right. That's just not right. <laughs> um. <laughs> So they basically took the main cast and assigned them like roles as the staff at Starfleet Academy as if it was like an 80s, like, you know, sitcom thing. And what's scary is how well it works. Yeah. yeah. Like these roles are, are kind of, <laughs> you know, working yeah. uh, what they're what they would be doing. So, yeah, it's. um. I, I just thought it was wow. really cute and fun. Um, and they even included some characters that are not main cast. Um, mm -hmm. Like Q. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love that uh, Loaxana Troy has a role. <laughs> it's so messed up. Um, but yeah, like I just, I was, I was tickled pink. I was like, oh, I'm like, this is, wow. this is what the internet is, is fun for. Fandom. You know, putting some some stuff together for mm -hmm. the fans, and of course Wesley Crusher is a student. Of course he of is, course. but isn't the only one. I see. So, yeah. So I I appreciate the effort put into this to not only give like kind of an homage, but like I think they really fleshed out nicely. Um this stuff and more, most importantly like have some nice kind of 80s sitcom -y theme music playing in the background as it goes through mm -hmm. um, and shows all of this stuff 
uh, I just really, I don't know, it yeah. amuses to no end. Wow. So if, if there's anything to, positive to say in terms of AI, um, I think this is one cute little, like, outcome of that. Yeah. No. Neat. So that's that's the links. And with that, that also means the end of the show. Aww. Plenty of ways to contact us. Uh, let us know if you like Star Trek. Yeah. What are your favorite keyboards and mice? What are the things we do like to know about us? Ask us anything. You can do that in um, many ways, such as going to our website, comesoutloud.com, and leaving a comment on the blog. No one's done that. You can do that. Uh, you can also shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can also join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. If you want to see when we're planning on recording these shows, you can subscribe to our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. If you would like to get various kutoromon, this is consent to my foreplay shirt, a hat, a mug, a uh, handy towel. Wipe that come off your face. Anyways, wow. You can do that at zazzle at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud. Uh, some of those designs were designed by Smashy at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the bear. You can find more of his work. Speaking of which, uh, just a slight preview. Uh, some, at least one of the designs in the near future was designed by mm -hmm. Smashy. So, more mm -hmm. to the Smashy collection. You can also become a patron, patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, get the episodes early. Not, not too much earlier, because I don't like delaying things that long. But mm -hmm. as soon as I'm done editing in my post, I'm, you get them right away. Uh, you can also uh, send us donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud uh, every two years this year. And it's when we have to pay a good chunk of a sum of money to keep our hosting. Um, mm. uh, you can also um, uh, find, find us anywhere you can find podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon Audible. Please rate us, review us, like, comment, and subscribe um, on YouTube as well um, uh, to basically boost up us, boost us up in the algorithm. If you leave a review, please let us know because we're really bad at checking those things. <laughs> you can find me anywhere in the internet: as box, that box, puppy box, cub box, something or other. If I'm actually on one of those platforms, Damon. Uh, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Uh, most very related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umber on Twitter. That Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you want the safe for work Twitter, you can find me as DMA Gamer 79. That's DMA Gamer 79. Gary? If you want to find me online, you can pretty much look up Gamer73 anywhere, uh, and it's probably best to send me a message directly. I'll do my best as soon as I see it or remember to reply. And with that, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.